Welcome to our lecture online. We're going to take another look at the delta function and using a delta function as an input in the time domain to see what the Fourier transform will be. It's actually fairly straightforward and what we want to do is go back to the basic definition of a delta function. So if we have an equation f of t, any equation, multiplied times a delta function of t minus t sub naught dt and we integrate that from a to b, ensuring that a and b are on both sides of the delta function, then the result of that integral is the function centered at t sub naught, with t equals t sub naught. And so if we apply that to the equation that we use to find the Fourier transform, and you can see here that this would then be the input function, so the impulse input function would now be a delta function, and here we have a picture of what that would look like, so that the integral of that delta function is equal to 1, we can then take the delta function and multiply it times e to the minus i omega t, and because of the same reasoning, since the limits, of course, bridge over the delta function, we know that the integral then must be e to the minus i omega sub naught t. So simply the f of t is equal to the e mi of minus i omega t, and the delta function is this. So we simply exchange it, of course, with the Fourier transform, this becomes the input function, and this is the function that will allow us to calculate the Fourier transform. So using that as a basis, we then go ahead and imagine that we have an impulse function that is a delta function like this. So we can then take the Fourier transform of that function. It will be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the delta function of t minus t sub naught times e to the minus i omega t, which then simply becomes e to the minus i omega sub naught t. And then what we can do is we can simply center our pulse where t sub naught is equal to zero. So when we plug in a zero for that, we get the Fourier transform is equal to e to the zero, which is equal to one. And that's of course what we already knew, that the, that the Fourier transform of a delta function equals one, but that is why we can say so. And so if we then center t sub naught, if we make that equal to zero, when we move this pulse over to the vertical axis, then the Fourier transform becomes equal to one. And that's how we know that that is true.